Okay, hello, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. If you have excessive travel on your handbrake, and the handbrake's standing up at almost a 90 degree angle, and you're using bricks as a parking brake to keep your vehicle in one place, then this video is just for you. We're going to have a look at adjusting the handbrake and replacing the shoes. <coughs> so let's do the basic check first what we're going to do is adjust up the handbrake and usually this is all that's needed firstly we're going to jack up and put on axle stands at the rear axle and then chock the front axle so we want the handbrake in the off position completely before we do any adjustments and then laying on the ground we will look at the adjuster which is where my finger is 17mm socket if it happens to be a later Defender or Discovery. Right, so winding this up clockwise will do up the adjuster and expand the shoes out. Okay, so you want to wind it out until the shoes catch the drum so they're not turning. And then wind it off until the drum is turning. Okay, and you can feel no bind but can hear some noise. Okay, well I usually do this twice, wind it up see what I'm doing don't overdo it just so that the drum is not moving you don't want to wind it out to break anything right so maybe quarter of a turn to half a turn will have this turning and you should be listening for a scraping noise without it feeling as though it's binding now that's adjusted as easy as that next thing you want to do is to check to see how much travel you have on here usually that's sufficient okay there we go that's in a better angle it's not up at 90 degrees generally if you park your vehicle on an incline and try the park brake while you're still in the vehicle that should hold it enough generally the shoes will last a long time because they're not working as a friction material they're just holding the vehicle they're not for stopping the vehicle at all so they'll last a while unless they become oil contaminated you may have issues with certain adjusters and expanders. This is when we need to have a look and take the drum off. So, if we do have issues and the handbrake is not holding, best to uh, pull the prop shaft off. It's held on by four bolts onto the flange of the gearbox, and then we can remove the drum. You can see here I've got a rather nice tool, prop shaft tool, for undoing the prop shaft bolts. Generally, the drum is also held on by a couple of grub screws either two or one it depends who's fitted what where sometimes there are none there generally you should be able to pull the drum off even if the handbrake's been adjusted up if not then de-adjust it and then take the drum off okay so what we have inside we have some springs and this is your adjuster and up here is the handbrake expander you also have the link to the handbrake cable here at the top you also have a couple of retainer springs up there and you also have retainer clips here to hold the shoes on. And if you notice on your right hand side, one of the retainer clips is missing. Okay, so there are two different types of handbrake set up on the Defender. Horizontal and vertical. Vertical on the left, horizontal on the right. Both shoe sets are different and the mechanisms are different as well. This one is from the earlier Defender range, so you've got to be aware of this because there are two different types. Bearmark used different terminology. There's the rod operated type and the direct entry cable type. The direct entry cable type is the later type or the vertical shoes. Part number for that is STC1525 for the model Defender 110 and it is VIN dependent. And the earlier type, or the horizontal shoes, or the rod operated type, is BR3654. Again, available from Bearmark distributors. Right, so let's have a look at the vertical one quickly. This one has an adjuster here, which you use a 11mm spanner for to adjust the brakes up. Whereas the later ones, which are your vertical shoes, have your socket in here which is much easier to adjust up and it's cable operated not link operated either way you have to use a handbrake lever to apply the park brake 
Okay, so this one, um, the verticals fitted to lighter defenders and discoveries, we have a pivot pin here and we have an arm which is operated by the cable. This has more in common with a normal brake drums, okay? Now the pivot arm pushes this expander rod and pushes the other shoe out, so they both expand together. Right, I'll pull it and you can see the movement of the shoes, it pushes both of them out together to make contact with the drum quite easy now this one is a three and a half ton van it has expander rod and there isn't much difference other than the fact it's got a few more complicated linkages but you can see the lever this one is adjusted slightly differently but the idea is the same you push out the bottom of the shoe to expand them out so the shoes don't have too far to go once you use the lever okay so the discovery and defender one you wind the expander out as such as it expands it pushes out the shoes simple enough all right so the second type or the earlier type is different the mechanisms are different they have shoes and springs which actually hold the shoes in place there's no retaining pin your adjuster pack is in here which can seize up and the expander pack here, which is rod operated, can also seize up. There's quite a complicated mechanism in there. We'll cover this in a different tutorial, but just to make sure you're aware there is a difference. All right, now these are brake shoes. These are actually common old garden brake shoes, and we have a leading and a trailing edge. All brake shoes have this. The leading shoe is the one that will contact the drum first, okay, and you've got to be aware of the rotation of the drum to be able to understand which way to fit the shoes. As it expands, it pushes out on the drum. This applies to all brake shoes. It has a taper on here. Now this stops the drum from snatching. With our Land Rover transmission brake, direction of rotation looking from the drum side is anti-clockwise, from the engine side is clockwise. So we'll look at this is anti-clockwise, okay? Remember this, DOR. So we have a leading shoe on the left-hand side with a leading edge, which is the one with the greater gap, and it has the bevel or chamfer, whatever you like. And you have a trailing shoe edge there, a leading edge shoe on the bottom, okay? And a trailing on the top. All right, this is the way that the shoes are fitted. These shoes don't only fit Land Rovers, they also fit road going cars and they also have two pivot holes here. So it is possible to get the shoes the wrong way around. So direction of rotation, remember this. Once you've learned that, it's quite easy when you're doing drum brakes. Right, so retaining the shoe, you have a pin which also has a cup like so and it turns and locks in that fashion. So now you know that, to take it out you just turn it and away you go, the pins drop out. However, they are sprung loaded as well. Okay, the specialist tool here, you could use a pair of pliers, but the idea is to push, turn the cup until it unlocks and the spring will push it out of the way, like so. So now you know how to take it off, you know how to put it back together. All right, removing the springs, you can use a set of um, pliers or better still, a set of side cutters which will grip much better. Right, so once you've got a grip of the spring, once you've got a grip of the spring, you can then pull it in such a fashion which is going to take it out. So, there you go, it's the first a top spring, top retainer spring. I'm doing this in a sequence which is easy for you to do. So, once that you've done that, remove the left hand shoe, take it out of the way, and it's held in at the bottom, all right, you can slip that out and the spring will then be released so you can drop that shoe out of the way. Okay, so removing the handbrake cable, even with it still adjusted, you pull the spring back and hold it on the cable and then push the cable to disengage the lever. Okay, this might be a bit of a struggle. Just remember not to cut the cable, okay? It has been known to be damaged. Okay, once that's off, you then can undo the C-clip from the pivot peg at the top. All right, the best way to do this is use a screwdriver, put it in a slot, and then turn it, and that will push the C-clip away. Remember, these are almost sprung loaded, so make sure you catch it. You can use a fatter screwdriver, and it will come out as such. 
depending on the condition of it, you possibly could use this again. However, don't lose it unless you know that you've got another one spare. There's nothing else that will retain this peg. Okay, so now that is off. We can remove the springs, everything else that are underneath there. You can see spring washers there, two of them. Okay, once they're off, you can then remove the lever ready to fit on a different handbrake shoe. Okay, don't forget to lubricate this before you put it back together. Right, so I've put it back together. There's no point in showing you, other than that putting the clip back together once more is actually sometimes a struggle. Now I've pushed it in and it's clicked into place. That's all you need to know, right? So we have our trailing shoe edge at the top, which is at the top where the pivot should be. The pivot operates okay and it's not too loose. So we can put this all back together. Now I've lubricated the wedges for the adjuster. Okay, well this is a special ceramic compound. You could use copper slip. However, copper slip tends to attract the dust. The bolt itself doesn't need lubricating. It has a locking compound on it, which makes it stiff. Without this, the brake would just simply wind itself off. The handbrake expander at the top has a retainer spring, which holds it in place. If you're fitting a new one on, it fits like this, as almost as a top hat. Now, this part here, which goes back in the handbrake, like so. Okay, so I've actually not got the handbrake connected, so I'm just going to put the tension back on this. Put it in the bottom slot of the adjuster and then fit the blue spring first of all. These are brand new springs that you can get in the kit. Secondly is the leading shoe if you like, or the left hand shoe towards you. Fitting it such, pulling it into place and then having the two dinosaur mouths if you like, or two snapping turtles mouths, biting onto the handbrake expander so they fit like this. Okay, so far so good. Next thing to do is to fit the top spring. That's quite easy, it doesn't need any explanation. Square your shoes up a little bit and then you're ready to put the uh, retainer springs back into place. Okay, so the retainer springs and clips, these can be a little bit of a pain, even for the most experienced mechanic. The idea is to push the cup past the pin, then turn it to lock it into place. And these can be rather fiddly at times, so take some patience. You turn it so the peg is at right angles to the slot. Okay, now that won't come out. That's retained. That is the right way to do it. And you do both of the shoes. All right, so the drum condition or the working surface, it doesn't have to pull the vehicle to a stop, but it does have to hold it. So you want as much contact area as possible. If you have deep scoring or a, a rather large ridge in the middle or a bump in the middle, it might be worth actually changing the drum depends if you've been off-roading and you've had loads of grit in it or not but generally the drums are usually okay to refit it would be a good idea to remove all the dust and any grit or stuff that's in there with a bit of glass paper scrub it up get it as shiny as you can without any glazing as well this will all help your handbrake especially if you've got to do an MOT they can't put it onto a brake roller, however they want to see it on, on an incline and working. So once the drum's fitted, you can then adjust it up, as I showed you earlier, and then wind it back. Possibly you're going to find, first of all, that your shoes will take a lot more adjusting up. So wind it back until you've got your working clearance, first of all. Then go in the cab, work your handbrake a few times. This will square the shoes up. Okay, once or twice or three times, uh, pulling the, the handbrake and then leaving it in the off position before you go back and readjust the handbrake. This way the shoes will be square. The rule of thumb is always to wind your brakes up to make contact with the drum and then wind them off. And we're looking for the clearance where you can just hear the brake shoes touching the drum. And that should be fine. So we locked it off. And then we'll wind it back, wind it off until we get movement where it's not tight. And that's good enough. 